Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality of the worst size, and welcome to week four of the summer, summer of Jackie Chan. And while the police story series has been a pretty big request, uh, it's kind of hard because after a fashion, there's like nine movies in the Police Story series, so if I were to cover them all, it would effectively become THE SUMMER OF POLICE STORY! But as it just so happens, a movie I had intended to review, Super Cop, is actually one of the films in the series! It's a bit complicated, but Police Story 3, Super Cop, was released in 1992, but the Miramax release in the United States didn't come until 1996, where the film was simply titled Super Cop. With many changes, like several cut scenes, and the redubbing of all of Jackie Chan's dialogue. By Jackie Chan this time, thankfully enough. However, just what is this mysterious police story of the quote-unquote super cop? Well, bad guys are doing bad things, so Jackie Chan must go undercover and help the bad guys do bad things? Because that leads to worse guys who lead to even worse guys. Who he also helps because that actually... Uh, you know, this movie really isn't the easiest to summarize, so uh, let's take a look at Super Cop and see if I can finally make sense of it. We start out, naturally enough, with the opening credit sequence! Uh... Joel! The fuck was that? After the introductory Acid Trip music video, we see Jackie Chan, who plays Ka Kui Chan, or in the Dimension dub, Kevin Chan, or in the German version, Jackie Chan. Either way, his denim jeans and denim jacket should clue you in that this movie is definitely from the 90s. As he arrives at the Hong Kong police headquarters, he overhears Y.K. Chen, played by Philip Chan, professing the need for Kevin, the Hong Kong super cop, to take out Chai Bot's drug trade, to Bill Tung, who plays Uncle Bill. Again. I'll telephone headquarters and I'll tell them no one in the Hong Kong police can do it. I'll say, go get James Bond, huh? Good idea. But Bill says there's no way they're not going to be able to get Kevin for this one. Either that or he really wants to see if Stanley Tong can track down Pierce Brosnan. Oh wait, this is 92. Would that be Timothy Dalton? Well, we're not getting either Bond anyway, as when Uncle Bill lets Kevin know his new assignment is some cushy security position, he flatly declines, instead insisting he gets the DEA assignment. Bill is apprehensive at first, but caves, and Kevin marches off the proud Hong Kong super cop! We're very tricky, huh? But they were actually trying to trick him into taking the position. But if Kevin's the kind of guy to leap at danger and the very real possibility of death, just how much deception is necessary, that's like tricking Jackie Chan into doing all of his own stunts. Of course, going undercover means he has to leave his girlfriend behind, May, played by Maggie Chung. He says he's going to be gone for, like, a month at a rural training camp. I can't call her from there because it's, like, super rural. Also, here's my insurance policy and the key to my safe deposit box, just in case in training he sprains himself so bad that she needs those things. Now grab your ticket and head off to China. Here he is introduced to the Chief of Security, Yang, played by Michelle Yeoh. So, the Chief of Security is an attractive lady. No need for any compliments. Oh, I was just being friendly. And Kevin's just about as comfortable in this position as any visual novel protagonist. As he's going undercover, she gives him the lowdown on his new identity. Or tries to, as he's so aloof that he can't even repeat it back to her, so she's not all that impressed with him so far. But at least he's got time to memorize the information while they work on making that new identity for him. 
You know what that means? Makeover time and a photographic montage. Fear. Mother Pun. Face forward. Okay. Set to one of the strangest renditions of Staying Alive I've ever heard. Which, like the opening, also was not part of the original soundtrack. None of the original soundtrack is part of this soundtrack. But, yeah. Miramax dub, that's a hell of a drug. Also, certain pieces of exposition are cut pretty severely, but who really cares what the hell is going on anyway? Yang talks a little about what Kevin's assignment is. It seems that Chaibot hired some mercs to rescue his brother, Panther, from the labor camp. This means Kevin must- Oh, never mind! It's time to introduce the Chief Coach Wang, played by Min Sing Wong. Yang isn't about to pass up this opportunity to whip Kevin into shape, and volunteers him to spar with Wang, and show off his super cop powers. Do you want to kill me? I'd like you all to welcome our super cop from Hong Kong. Welcome, 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 welcome. Jesus Christ. I thought they said that Jackie Chan never did horror movies. At the very least, the action is much less terrifying. At first, it looks like Kevin has no hope to even touch Wang. But as the battle heats up, we see that the title of super cop may actually be an understatement when it comes to Kevin's fighting prowess. <laughs> And we know when he's beating Wang, he's thinking of Yang. But despite doing well for himself, Ken decides, hey, what are we fighting for? Why not show me how these cartwheel thingies work? Evidently, they work by tossing Jackie Chan into a nearby tree. Enough fun. Our mission begins today. Oh, um, okay. Still don't really know what Kevin's assignment is, but... Yay, Super Cup! They tell him to remember the location of the suspension bridge, as Kevin has Yang and the prison guards on his side for this... something. Where we are introduced to Panther, played by Hua Yuan. His extremely well thought out and complex plan to escape this super maximum security Chinese prison involves distracting the guards by getting some prisoners to fight each other before hiding in the truck bed and hoping the guards don't notice that. Funny thing though, super maximum security prisons happen to have a policy of checking the trucks before allowing them to pass. This means his escape is almost over before it even starts. But that's where our super cop Kevin comes in. Only he could jump in in the nick of time to toss the suddenly very inept guard about five feet away and give them the chance to escape. After a fashion, still have a while to run, and Yang has to kill the shit out of Panther's other friend, while the two of them painfully and awkwardly try to escape up a steep hill, which Kevin insists is their way to a suspension bridge and freedom! However, once they finally reach the top, it turns out there is no bridge. He's Jackie Chan, after all, so the only way to escape is via a precarious zipline flailing about, suspended by a flimsy line, dangling over miles of certain doom. Suspension bridge, my eye. So, I have no idea what in the hell he's doing there, and the things that are actually laid out in plans don't actually go that way, so I have less than zero of an idea of what the fuck is going on. Kevin, now undercover as Fu Sheng Lin, tells Panther, okay, got you this far, there's a village that way, I'm out. However, Panther was impressed with Fu Sheng's badassitude while breaking him out of prison, and intends to pay him far, far more than his initial mercenary fee to continue his services. So they agree that Fu Sheng will work for Panther, and get paid once they get to Hong Kong. They return to Panther's old hideout on a dark and stormy night. With Panther's endorsement, they accept Fu Sheng without question. However, Panther questions just who sold him out, and what happened to that heroin shipment. It seems one among them is a bit lacking in their loyalties. No! Don't shoot! Please! No, please! Showing that Kevin needs to keep his head down and just follow orders if he wants to survive. And also this police action is now responsible for at least three deaths, but let's ignore that little fact. Panther knows they're going to need a new hideout for a while, but hey, he's got a new friend, Fu Sheng here, and his stories about that village he used to live in and run a factory, so a few stay behind for the next shipment, while Panther takes Fu Sheng and some friends down to said village. It's not the easiest task, as Kevin barely remembers their names and has no fucking idea what he's doing, but fortunately, the police were prepared for this outcome. Uncle Fu Sheng! 
Your mama miss you. Come home quickly. Come on. Oh, yeah. Uh, my nephew. <laughs> While they've been having a lot of trouble trying to stop Chai Bot's heroin trade, it seems hiring a small army of actors to depict Fu Sheng's friends and family is a relatively simple task. Just about everyone in this particular area, very loudly and enthusiastically, welcomes Fu Sheng home, mentioning their relations and Fu Sheng's backstory when possible. This continues all the way home, where Panther notices all those interesting pictures of Fu Sheng and a certain woman. Is she your wife? Hello! Brother, you're back! Yang, now Hanalin, Fu Sheng's sister. You can decide for yourselves which is weirder, that or the pigtails. Not to be outdone in weirdness, we are soon introduced to Fu Sheng's mother. Kevin! Uncle Pio! Have you brought me a watch? Uh, no watches. Have you any money then? Huh? It looks like everyone in this movie just suddenly went undercover in order to try and get Jackie Chan's money. Really not sure how this stops Chai Bot's heroin trade. If anything, it gets them to not feel like hiding out in Fu Sheng's home much longer, so they tell Fu Sheng's mother, with a surprisingly strong grip, that they're going to go out to a restaurant now, which means she insists they take Hana along with them. Not that the two of them can be privy to Panther's private dealings, though. They must sit elsewhere and notice there are more security forces in the restaurant. Jesus, town is crawling with cops. Problem is, these particular policemen aren't in on the sting and decide to try to arrest them, causing the restaurant to erupt into an action scene. With tasers aplenty. God, if this were any more 90s, people would be trying to kill each other with beepers while rollerblading. Things don't go entirely in Panther and Fusheng's favor, but this only gives Michelle Yeoh a chance to show the audience she too can kick all the asses, take all the names, and defeat taser-wielding miscreants with nothing but the power of chopsticks! Not that Jackie Chan can't show off too. Can't you throw? I scared him away. I feel like Jackie Chan's version of events is a little more accurate to what it would look like to try and actually win a fight with chopsticks. But more police swarm in, and they must run! Except these particular officers actually know what Kevin and Yang are doing here, and while they allow Panther and Fu Shang to escape, Yang pretends to do battle with an officer, firing two shots. Hey, what's the matter? I killed a policeman. <laughs> what's the problem? If she hadn't killed him first, he'd have killed you. Ah, he's Jackie Chan. He'd have done a double backflip, twist, kick, chop, and dodged all of the bullets. I mean, he'd have to. In the stunt, I'm pretty sure they'd be using real munitions. Because she's saved their lives, Panther decides to bring Hana down to Hong Kong as well. However, while they take the slow boat out of China, the Royal Hong Kong Police surrounds them, demanding to board for inspection. No bother, just so happens they happen to have a handy dandy speedboat inside for just such a situation, easily escaping their pursuers, and finally bringing Fu Sheng and Hana to Panther's brother, the drug lord Chai Bot, played by Kenneth Sang. Dump them into the sea. But why? I said dump them into the sea. He shows up and you manage to get out of a high-security prison? Those two are cops, you idiot! Oh, I know, but... Come on, it's Jackie Chan! Kevin and Yang then beat the shit out of a Chai Bot's men! Before Fu Sheng says he's not pleased with how unhospitable Panther's brother is and gives him the gun back. That's because it's not loaded! And Chai Bot also drops the mag and racks a slide just to be sure it's unloaded anyway. He actually didn't know they were cops, so it was just making sure you could trust them. Evidently, beating the crap out of his goons is something he looks for in a friend. I guess that makes sense when half your day is spent murdering your own underlings who have wronged you in some unspecified manner. But it turns out Chai Bot has his own secret dealings, trying to get a certain bank code. But moving on, we suddenly teleport to the Thailand-Cambodia border, where Chai Bot and friends are meeting up with the Legion of Doom, or rather, drug dealers. Their supplier brings all of his clients in for a sort of business agreement and thanksgiving, only with far more crime and murder. Problem is, crop was bad, so Chai Bot's share of heroin is going to be fuck all this year. You have to cut us in. Ah, uh, just who are you to dictate? You think you are Fidel Castro, huh? And while looking up differences between this and the 92 version, evidently this line is one of them. It was supposed to be translated more along the lines of, heh, who the hell do you think you are, George Bush? It seems Chai Bot's going to have a hard time bargaining. As you see, his wife was kinda sorta arrested and she has the codes to get into his foreign bank account, so he kinda sorta hasn't paid for the hiller when he got last time. Ah oh, well, he can try the persuasive power of grabbing a man and cracking his skull open with a durian. 
This, of course, results in everyone pulling guns on everyone else, but that's not going to phase Chaibot. General, watch closely. He just so happened to pack Hana full of explosives just in case. I'm also pretty sure Panther's got a grenade or two up his butt. Chaibot says that Hana's entire vest is full of dynamite, so probably a good idea to watch your fire. So the general, played by Lole, decides to lie low for a while until the kids are done fighting amongst themselves. This means after he's a safe distance away, the bullets are flying, the rockets are soaring, and everything explodes! There's so much gunfire, I wouldn't be surprised if Arnold Schwarzenegger would show up at any moment to do battle with an invisible alien. Jackie and Michelle do their own share of ass kickery, very mindful of the vest on her, of course, but after about 90% of the compound is destroyed and most of the attendees are killed, the general still questions exactly how he's supposed to meet Chaibot's demands. If I supply you, what will I tell the others? I'm pretty sure most of them are a bit too perforated, incinerated, or disintegrated to really care at this point. So to catch everyone up to speed, in this police sting to infiltrate Chaibot's heroin trade, they've just increased the amount of heroin coming into Hong Kong. Yay! Right now, Fu Shang is a little more concerned with the fact that they dared to give his sister a vest packed with dynamite. So, uh, Chaibot shoots her. <laughs> No bullet can penetrate Kevlar! Uh, armor-piercing supersonic 556 mean anything to you? Now, most of these guys were running around with rifles, so it's a pretty damn good thing that they just avoided getting shot now, isn't it? So Chaibot decides to send those two to Malaysia. That's because, as it turns out, that's where Chaibot's wife is being held, awaiting trial. She refuses to give the code to the bank account without actually seeing her husband, which seems simple enough to fix, but forget just showing up, we've got an overly complicated plan to execute. One that might be a bit tricky because, <laughs> wouldn't you know it, May just so happens to have come here at the same time. But in case you were hoping they might explain what the plan is... Why must we know about the courthouse? We'll tell you when it's time. Nope, just trust that they have a plan. I think. Even better, our two leads aren't quite sure what they're doing either, with Panther breathing down their necks and no way to contact Hong Kong to find out what to do next. I didn't realize they were even doing that, but what's this? A random photographer takes a random photograph that just so happens to get into May's hands, meaning she knows that Kevin is around here somewhere. This results in her hilariously believing him to have run off on a secret vacation with a mistress. So Kevin and Yang do the logical thing and just pretend like she's some prostitute that doesn't know how to take a hint and throw her into the pool. How much do you want? Huh? More than you got! Ground! That's all I can. God, one day we're gonna look back on this and laugh! As you're explaining it to the divorce attorney. So, after being told off by the love of your life, thrown into a pool by the woman he was with, told off by his scruffy friend, and then told by the hotel staff prostitution is a no-no, May runs into Kevin again! He's trying to explain everything to her, but after hearing that official business excuse, she slaps him and lets him know that he can't possibly afford her services. Aha! She believes him and gave Panther the slip, then proceeds to explain all the ins and outs of that deception to her friend, how she's covering for her boyfriend, who is an undercover cop. Right in earshot of Jai Batman. Stay very calm when you hear this, huh? It seems your pal is a Hong Kong inspector and he's working with the DEA. I've got his girlfriend. Oh, thank God. You know, for a second I thought this was yet another call about the important information about my vehicle's extended warranty. So the jig is up. Panther quickly kicks both Jackie Chan and Michelle Yeoh's asses. Somehow. And around that time, Chaibot's wife, Chen Wen Shi, played by Josephine Ku, is sentenced to death for conspiracy against the state. And it's up to Kevin and Yang to save her. You see, they are being forced to, with May being held hostage and her life threatened if they don't comply. If you want to see your girlfriend again, just do what we say. Okay. As opposed to the rest of the movie where you just did what they said anyway. While Chen is being transferred, Kevin fakes car trouble, causing his truck to careen towards the police escort. This causes an accident, and they set off explosives pretending that horrible poison gas has been released. Also, Yang shows up in disguise, having been part of this accident, only to kick everyone's ass along with Kevin and take Chen back from the police. However, now he holds her hostage, demanding Chaibot release his girlfriend, or Kevin will kill Chaibot's wife. Not sure if he was complying, or her screaming was just that annoying. 
But then Chen smacks Yang, and even more police show up to shoot at the helicopter. Stealing a convertible Saints Row style, Kevin gives chase. Yang is on the van that Chen is escaping in, but as Chaibot in the helicopter clues the guys in the van in on that, they open fire. It's a good thing Kevin is there too. They hit her with the car. Well, well, it was a light hit, and they can continue the chase, tearing through a market. It eventually goes to the rooftops, where Chen climbs the helicopter rope ladder to, um... Well, it, it's not safety, but it's slightly better. Not so fast. Kevin can grab onto the rope ladder as well. And, uh, not climb it. Just hang on so as to get as many terrifying shots of probable death as you can fit in several minutes of film. The pilot eventually tries to smush the man with an oncoming train. But not only does he survive, painful as Durian Landing is, but the helicopter itself is caught in the train, and Chaibot falls onto it. However, Yang isn't out yet. She's played through every GTA mission inspired by this one scene and knows where this is going. A stunt she pulled off herself. Eventually. I mean, some takes were a little more painful than others. Now on the train, Kevin and Yang can beat the crap out of Chaibot's last two goons. Conveniently enough, they seem to be the toughest yet, and not the smartest. Chaibot himself, though, gets hit with an exploding helicopter and run over by a train. Ow. Well, Chen responds to this by just telling them the password to her Swiss bank account and saying the money's all theirs. It really belongs to the people of China. But Hong Kong can keep it in custody. After 1997, we'll be working together, eh? Okay, so... Kevin went undercover to break Panther out of prison to infiltrate Chai Bot's organization to... kill him and take his money. Is that it? That Was that really the plan? And uh, Chen's still gonna be executed, right? I mean, that, that was the ruling, wasn't it? And yeah, that's it! The end! All we have left to do is watch that blooper reel you get at the end of Jackie Chan movies. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting Those cats were fast as lightning Set to Kung Fu fighting. Whoever the hell at Miramax picked the soundtrack for this movie must have thought they were hilarious! Anyway, that was Super Cop. And it is a lot of fun. And confusing as hell. I'm not entirely sure how much of that has to do with the dub, as unfortunately I have not seen the original Hong Kong edit, Police Story 3 Super Cop. However, while there were alternate edits and certainly pieces of exposition cut from the 96 edit, there is a lot of information about exactly what the hell they are doing and why that are just not there. It's normal in an undercover cop flick for some events to happen that mess things up, and the heroes have to switch things up on the fly to save the day. Thing is, in Super Cop, while we did get a big change to the situation when May gets kidnapped, it really didn't change what Kevin and Yang were doing. Hell, if they just decided to turn on him and hold his wife hostage without May being kidnapped, and we learned that was the plan all along, it might have made more sense. However, it's clear that this movie really isn't something you watch for the story. The action scenes are the big star here, and in that regard, the film does really well. The slower scenes never overstay their welcome, and the action is choreographed and edited masterfully. Both the excitement and the humor flow naturally, and it really delivers on that whole Jackie Chan dance of brutality we all know and love. Of course, this isn't just a Jackie Chan flick, but a Jackie Chan Michelle Yeoh flick, and she certainly holds her own. The movie skews more towards Jackie Chan, as I'm sure most viewers would prefer, but honestly, I wouldn't have minded seeing her kick ass in a more 50-50 balance between Jackie Chan. At the end of the day, Super Cop is a series of settings held together with the adhesive of ass kickery. The spectacle is great, the stunt work is on point, the choreography is fluid, the humor is well balanced, but the story is so shallow it left me re-watching exposition scenes over and over again convinced I have to be missing something, but no, really, it's just not there. So overall, Super Cop comes in at two durians to the head out of five. A high two, I was leaning more towards a three, but this does feels more like a so bad it's good flick. Even though it's still really good. Thank you all for watching, I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, chopsticks are for eating, not killing.
You! You! You left the note! What do you want? 